Hello, class. Uh, uh, we are now on chapter 13, and uh, I'm excited about this. Uh, chapter 13 is about addictive behaviors. Um, so, um, the opening quote on page 495. Addictive behaviors are lifetime nightmares that focus on immediate self-gratification without thought or concern for one's well-being or that of others, ultimately taking away control the person has over life itself. So, some questions and discussion. Have you known someone who has been addicted to something? Okay, it may be yourself, it may be someone else, uh, maybe a family member, maybe a friend, someone you knew in high school or know in high school. Um, again, it may be yourself. Uh, I've, I've felt the feelings of addiction uh, in my life. I've seen family members. Uh, uh, feel the effects of addiction. Um, so the next question is, what has your experience been with that person? How has it been? Um, again, my family members, um, some of them have, have really, our relationship is, is kind of strained uh, because of the addiction. Um, and it, for one brother of mine, um, he's no longer addicted, uh, but um, our relationship is kind of different now because his brain is not the same. So it's harder to talk to him. Um, so how has the choices of that person affected you and your life? Um, so I'm sure we in class could have a really really good discussion about this and and I'm sure there'd be a lot of great answers and, and uh, from personal experiences uh, but have a little think about that uh, how has addiction affected your life uh, because of you or because of someone else that you care about you love um, or um, just someone that you've known in your life um, immediate self-gratification without thought or concern uh, for others or that person's well-being. So, um, obviously a, a terrible thing. Okay, on page 496, 496. Okay, what is drug addiction and how quickly can someone become addicted to drugs? Okay, read and discuss. Okay, so we'll read a little bit, but uh, you can ponder on these, uh, these answers. And you may have your own answers. Okay, and that's okay. Drug addiction, addictive behavior, substance abuse, or chem chemical dependency is a complex brain disease, disease that over time can alter brain structure and function. It is characterized by compulsive and uncontrollable drug cravings with serious negative consequences. Because there are vast individual differences in sensitivity to different drugs, how quickly addictive behavior develops is hard to predict. Psychological and physiological factors, as well as the type of drug used, influence a person's response to the drug and subsequent addiction to it. Whereas one individual may use a certain drug several times without harmful effects, someone else may seriously overdose the first time the drug is used, the same drug is used. All drugs have potentially damaging effects, and some have life-threatening consequences. One moment of weakness or craving 
or caving in, sorry, to peer pressure can easily result in a lifetime nightmare for both users and everyone around them. So how quickly someone becomes addiction? It varies from person to person. Uh, some people are more susceptible to the effects of drugs. Um, and that could be other, not just harmful drugs, but it could be also uh, other types of harmful things like alcohol and um, like we discussed in class uh, before, uh, one person uh, drinking alcohol can be happy and then uh, someone else may be um, angry and upset. Um, so it, it varies from person to person. Okay. Okay, addiction discussion. What are some things people can be addicted to? Okay, so some of the normal and most common responses, obviously drugs, uh, alcohol, uh, but think about some other things that people may be addicted to. Uh, this chapter is not just about um, addiction to drugs. Uh, there's lots of addictions uh, people can be addicted to. Um, I saw a TV show once about someone that was addicted to uh, eating glass. Um, so it, it could be a lot of different things people can be addicted to. Uh, some of the things that I thought of Okay, is cell phones. Uh, that's a big one in today's society. We, we can't seem to put down the cell phones. Uh, and I feel guilty of it. And I just, I can't imagine someone that's been growing up with cell phones. And, and obviously we've talked about parenting in the past. Hey, go play on your tablet. Go play on your cell phones. Um, so, you know, we're, we're so used to having cell phones in our hands. Uh, everything is on the cell phone, the smartphone these days. Uh, so people can become um, addicted to it. Uh, I think there was even a movie with, with Joaquin Phoenix about uh, being in love with his cell phone. I never saw it, so don't ask me any questions about it. Uh, shopping. Shopping's a big one. Uh, there's a lot of shopping online these days. Uh, it can be very easy to shop just by clicking one little button uh, and it becomes addictive. I know people that get boxes from Amazon every day. Um, drugs. We've talked about drugs. Uh, someone can be addicted to sex. Someone can be addicted to pornography. Others can be addicted to food. Uh, We've talked about my chocolate addiction. Um, so, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, trust me, I've been better lately. Uh, exercise. Uh, even things that we think of something being positive uh, can also have negative effect, effects on us if we do not control those impulses uh, or we don't... Um, uh, have good time management. Uh, we just s solely focus on that one thing. And exercise can be problematic. Um, gambling as well. Uh, online gambling uh, with the legalization of sports gambling. Um, uh, the, the, it's becoming a big problem. It's al always been a big problem. Uh, but uh, Online sports gambling, uh, we better watch out for as a society. Smoking, uh, obviously tobacco use, um, obviously marijuana as well. It's become legalized in many states. We'll talk about that later. Uh, and caffeine as well. Um, caffeine addiction is, is a big one. Uh, we've got coffee this and coffee that. We've got tea. Um, and it can become a real problem. Okay, Jose's experience. Okay, uh, if we were in class, I'd ask you to read that. 
um, and we can discuss it. Uh, unfortunately, we're online. Um, so read that on your own. Um, um, and uh, maybe it'll enlighten uh, you on this this topic. Uh, so what are some reasons people turn to addictive behaviors? Okay, so looking at Jose's experience, okay, um, you know, he, he had some issues, um, but in general, what are some reasons people turn to addictive behaviors? Um, I'm sure the answers would vary a lot. Um, I, I specifically can't answer for certain people. Uh, the thoughts that come to my head are, um, I think, uh, to be cool and popular could be a reason. Um, I think that's why some people start smoking. Um, you know, you don't want to be left out. Uh, you want to be... Uh, the king of the party and and things like that. You want to look like you're having fun and and cool, um, like what uh, Jose says here. You know when he was using meth, I felt like the king of the world. As soon as it wore off, I felt so horrible. I would do pretty much anything just to feel better again, and that begun beca uh, begun a period of a couple of years where meth crowded out everything else in my life. I stopped caring about school and about any goals I had for the future. I didn't care if I disappointed my parents or friends. Uh, it can definitely numb you from emotions um, and caring about things. Uh, but um, I don't know. I think uh, answers would vary why someone turned turn to some some people turn or the reasons why people turn to addictive behaviors. And then addictive behaviors probably become, or they do become a cycle uh, that you got to break. Okay, uh, we got the personal profile. Five questions up there. Um, have you ever suffered from addiction to any legal or illicit drug? What helped you overcome the addictive behavior? If you have not yet overcome it, are you ready to do so? Do you know where to turn to for assistance? Okay, we've had uh, one of our journals. Uh, we talked about resources in the community. Um, adapt and, and things like that. Uh, but there is resources out there to help addictive behaviors and overcome those things. Um, but are you ready to move on from, from those things? Um, do you regularly, weekly, or nearly weekly exceed the recommended one to two alcoholic beverages per day? Do you understand potential health, personal, and family implications associated with alcohol abuse? Okay, we're going to talk about that later. I know the videos aren't showing up, but uh, uh, we've got some, uh, uh, in this lecture, we've got some uh, smoking commercials from yesteryear. Uh, as well as some alcohol commercials from the Super Bowl. And I'll ask you at that time, what is the message uh, from these companies? What, what are they trying to market? Um, and the answer that we'll discuss later is they're trying to market fun and, and happiness. Uh, whereas the reality for alcohol and drug abuse uh, and smoking and things like that is quite the opposite um, and it can have harmful health uh, effects on the body and one of my favorite musicians um, died from alcohol abuse unfortunately okay um, have you decided to forego instant gratification and peer pressure by saying no to substance abuse that will harm your health and long-term life, satisfa life satisfaction. What led you to uh, led you to uh, to this decision, and how long did it take for you to make that choice? 
so maybe it wasn't an addiction. Maybe you tried something in high school or in college and um, what led you to say no in the future? Um, you know, I'm not going to do that vice. Um, but what has led you, maybe you were addicted. What has led you to overcome that? Um, and if you haven't, are you willing to say no when someone offers it to you, even if it's a close friend or family member? What are you feel? What are your feelings about tobacco use in general and exposure to secondhand smoke? Okay, vaping is big in our society now. Smoking, there's all sorts of taxes to make it more expensive and less accessible to buy. You know, they're behind the counter. You don't see it. You don't see as much marketing anymore for cigarettes. Uh, but uh, what are your feelings about that in society? Uh, when I was growing up, you could be at a sporting event and people were smoking cigarettes everywhere around you. Um, these days, you can't be even close to a restaurant door. Uh, you're not allowed to. It's against the law. At uh, UCC, there's designated places that are far away from any buildings um, with uh, that you can you know smoke at. Uh, but what are your feelings in general about about these things? Is it just uh, it's their choice? That's fine. Uh, some countries have proposed recently that uh, they ban the selling of cigarettes. Um, and they're, the, some of the countries are saying uh, they're going to keep increasing the age limits. So someone below 40 can't buy cigarettes. And then in five years, you know, anyone below 45 can't buy them uh, to slowly eradicate them. Um, if you smoked cigarettes, have you quit? If you never smoked, have you helped someone else successfully quit smoking? If so, what approach did you use and why were you successful in accompl accomplishing this goal? Uh, I've had um, friends uh, that have had parents smoke and, and we'll talk about secondhand smoke probably a little bit later, but um, you know, um, it's obviously not, not good to be around. Uh, for your lungs and your health and um, everything, really. Okay, introduction here. Substance abuse remains one of the most serious health, cons health problems afflicting society. Chemical dependency is extremely destructive, damaging and ending millions of lives. When addictive behaviors are an issue, education is vital, more perhaps than any other unhealthy behavior. Becoming educated about addiction and the risks of substance abuse will help you make more informed decisions when offered harmful substances. The time to make healthy choices is now. Uh, what kind of education did you uh, receive growing up? Um, was this taught in your elementary school, uh, even kindergarten? I suppose that's elementary school these days, isn't it? Um, but uh, were these things brought up? Uh, was there just say no campaign when you were growing up? Um, I'm trying to think uh, about Australian schools. Uh, obviously, we you know, I've talked about it before, but Australia has a big problem with alcohol abuse. Um, I would go to parties at the age of 13, 14. Parents would be home. Everyone would be drinking at the party and the parents wouldn't care. Um, it's just a part of society. And I knew people that uh, died, uh, choked on their own vomit uh, from alcohol abuse. Uh, at these kind of parties, and uh, that's one reason I'm in America. To, to uh, I like like the town of Roseburg to raise kids, uh, but um, but uh, how has society been influenced by addiction? Um, I think we could 
um, you know, answer that in a, in a lot of different ways. Uh, society's been affected um, and influenced uh, by addiction in many ways. We see uh, we're influenced by addiction in the media. Uh, we see famous people all the time going to rehab. Um, you know, we've we've had things, certain things look cool. And uh, I'm thinking about like the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Every movie star and every movie you see from that era, uh, everyone's smoking. All the biggest names in Hollywood smoked. And on screen, uh, that was the case too. Um, they didn't really know the health benefits, uh, the health health problems that it was associated with cigarettes and smoking at that time. Um, but also alcohol and drug abuse. Um, um, technology with online shopping, uh, cell phones and things like that. Uh, society, you know, we've got choices to make, right? Uh, and sometimes some people are more susceptible to these uh, addictions than others. Okay, page 497, 13.1. Psychotherapists have described addiction as a problem of imbalance or unease within the body and mind. Addictions are marked by incessant dependence on a particular behavior or substance despite, despite continual negative physical and emotional consequences. Addictions bring about compulsive and uncontrollable behavior or use of substance. Although most people tend to associate addiction with drug and alcohol abuse, addiction can extend to many areas. Almost anything can be addicting. Okay, video games, uh, reading a book uh, or books, um, anything. Uh, and I agree with that. Uh, almost anything can be, uh, you know, addictive. Um, of the many types of addiction, some addictive behaviors are more detrimental than others. The most serious form of chemical depend dependency on illicit and prescription drugs, tobacco. Uh, yeah, so the most serious form is de is chemical dependency. Uh, less serious are addictions to work, though that could result in a, a broken ma marriage and a broken home, I suppose. Um, and maybe the stress from work, uh, working all the time, uh, very harmful to your health. Uh, coffee, shopping, and even exercise. People who are addicted to f to f uh, who are addicted to food eat to release stress or boredom. Uh, boredom is an interesting word because uh, me and my wife we always talk about our kids are in the kitchen because they're bored, um, or to reward themselves for every small personal achievement when it. When career pursuits consume a person's life, even work can become an unhealthy behavior. More recently, technological innovation has also brought on concerning addictions to television. Um, I have a sister-in-law that is addicted to watching daytime television, Days of Our Lives, and General Hospital. Um, smartphones, online gaming, and social networks. And we talked about gambling as well. Um, okay, here's a video. I'm gonna put the link in because the videos just have not been working. Um, so I'll put the link to this video and the other videos um, in the module for this week for chapter 13. Okay, 13.2, how addiction develops. Okay, uh, read list on, uh, on your own. Anything that surprises you. Okay, so although addictive behaviors covered a wide spectrum, they have factors in common that predispose people to addiction. Among these factors are the following. The behavior is reinforced. Hmm. 
The addiction is an attempt to meet basic human needs, such as physical needs, the need to feel safe, the need to belong, the need to feel important, or the need to reach one's potential. The addiction seems to, relive, or to relieve stress temporarily. Okay, lots of people turn to alcohol and drugs. Um, <clears throat> um, uh, when they feel stressed, they want to relieve that stress. Okay, we talked about eating ice cream as well, right? Uh, when we want to relieve stress. Um, the addiction results from peer pressure. The addiction can be present within the person's value system. A serious physical illness is present and the addiction may provide escape from pain or fear of dis disfigurement. Okay. The addict feels pressured to perform or succeed. The addict has self-hate. Um, you know, you want to harm yourself. Okay, uh, the other things uh, that we just talked about, um, you know, maybe there's something that you feel that's empty in your life and you're trying to fill that void by feeling better about yourself uh, by turning to a substance or, or anything. Uh, a genetic link is present. Hereditary might dictate dictates dictate susceptibility to some addictions society allows addiction advertising even encourages it you can sleep better with a pill snacking helps you enjoy life more fully parties and sports are more fun with alcohol shop till you drop and so on the same general traits and behaviors are involved involved in all kinds of addictions whether they involve food sex gambling shopping or drugs um, you know, pornography is free now. Uh, it's all over the internet. Uh, back when I was growing up, uh, people that were into that had to go to the gas station and buy a magazine. Now it's just everywhere. Um, and it's really, really harmful, uh, to not only oneself, but also to marriages and relationships. Okay, page 498, okay, page 498, drugs, misuse, and abuse, okay, a drug is any substance that alters the, uh, the user's ability to function, okay, um, so we're going to read the third paragraph here. When drugs are used regularly, they integrate into the body's chemistry, increasing the user's tolerance to the drug and forcing the user to increase the dosage constantly to obtain similar results. Okay, we, we know about, um, or we've, we've heard about, or, or read about, or saw, um, how a person using drugs they're always chasing that first high uh, i think that's being talked about with heroin and meth uh, and crack cocaine um <clears throat> they're always chasing that first high and and um you know and then they get down and it wears off and then they want that high again um Drug abuse leads to serious health problems, and more than half of all adolescent suicides are drug-related. Often, drug abuse opens the gate to other illegal activities. Okay. Um, the majority of convicted criminals, about 85%, of federal and state inmates have abused drugs. That's a that's a large percentage, 85%. Okay. Um, so obviously, um, a, a 
we, there are greater, uh, how should I say this? Uh, there are additional risks to taking drugs, right? Uh, you're more likely to go to jail and you're more likely to abuse other substances uh, and drugs uh, if you're abusing, you know, maybe a small thing uh, and then it can increase to something else and become even more harmful. And then you got to think about the health consequences. Okay, figure 13.1. This is 2019 data of drug use. Okay, one month period. Uh, like I said, with the legalization in many states of marijuana, uh, this number is probably much higher now. This is 2019. We are now in 2024. Uh, so um, marijuana use is probably skyrocketed. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, people have varying opinions about marijuana, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, prescription drugs, drugs, hallucinogenics, um, obviously pretty big here in Oregon. Uh, lots of people use mushrooms and, and LSD and things like that. Um, and you can see the other things as well there. Okay. So those total number there. Um, It's a pretty high percentage uh, of people using drugs in the United States, uh, 12 years or older, uh, millions and millions of people. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about energy drinks. This is uh, amongst young people, especially even older people like me. Um, but definitely uh, amongst young people, um, because I see it every every day in class almost uh, throughout the years. Uh, someone consuming consuming a high sugar or high caffeine um, and all the other ingredients in energy drinks, um, you know, Red Bull. Uh, a few years ago, there was some reported cases of people with uh, 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 heart problems uh, that had drank Red Bull. Uh, the textbook states that young adults who consume energy drinks report higher rates of illicit drug, alcohol, and cigarette use. Do you agree with this? Okay. Do you think something as simple uh, or is uh, easily accessible from the grocery store like an energy drink can lead to other harmful things. Um, again, probably probably varying uh, opinions. Okay, specifically about uh, caffeine effects on the body. Too much caffeine can cause jitter jitteriness and insomnia and induce symptoms of anxiety, depression, nervousness, and dizziness. Okay. Uh, pure caffeine powder, which is sold online, virtually unregulated, contains as much caffeine in one teaspoon as in the amount of 23 cups of coffee. Okay. So, you know, do your research about it. Um, and uh, the things that are in there um, obviously current trends it is trendy uh, energy drinks uh, the labeling you know you just saw on that previous page just the marketing and labeling hey you know it's trendy it's it's colorful uh, it's bright in the past decade deaths linked to the accidental overdose overdose of highly caffeinated caffeinated products, including five hour energy drinks and pure caffeine powder have prompted the FDA to warn consumers and take action against several product distributors. 
Teens who consume energy drinks, about one third of adolescents in the US report higher rates of drug, alcohol, and cigarette abuse. Among college students, research indicates that consumption of energy drinks is linked to precarious behaviors such as illicit drug use, violence, smoking, prescription drug use, and sexual risk taking. Mixing energy drinks with alcohol is also a concerning college trend. Okay. Do you see caffeine use and energy drinks as potential problems for addiction or health? Uh, I think um, answers would vary. Uh, no big deal. Uh, you know, and then other people might have a different opinion about it. Okay, prescription drugs. Okay. Um, you know, one thing I, I want to point out is drugs um, not only affect poor people and poor societies and poor communities, but also affluent or rich people, wealthy people. It's definitely not just a poor person drug, uh, especially prescription drugs. Um, you know, I think um, I've seen some different documentaries, and it's it's mainly wealthy families, the, their kids, and and the uh, women uh, especially um, uh, are turning to these prescription drugs. Um, the U.S. makes up less than five percent of the global population. Yet Americans consume 80% of the world's prescription painkillers. Nearly 70% of Americans are on one or more prescription drugs and 20% take five or more pills per day. Okay, so that's pretty intense. Okay, uh, why do you think that is? Uh, a couple of thoughts from me. Um, there's a lot of marketing. I'm thinking about marketing a lot today uh, with these topics, but uh, there's always commercials in the United States of America. And I've lived in a, a few different countries. Uh, so I, I suppose I have that world perspe perspective. Uh, there's commercials about pills all the time, this or that. Um, and they state the side effects, but it doesn't seem to deter anyone <laughs> from having some of these pills. Um, you know, it's not necessarily uh, uh, prescription drugs, uh, but I, th I think I've told you guys before that I know quite a few people. Uh, I go and visit their family friends. I go visit them. I stay in their houses. Uh, one person in particular went and stayed in their house and they literally had a full pantry full of vitamins this, vitamins that, um, even prescription stuff. Um, and then I went and visited another family friend and we were staying down in their basement and they had just in their basement lounge room, they had a whole wall of vitamins and pills and stuff like that. Um, but what other reasons that you can think of? It makes up 5% of the global population, yet Americans consume 80% of the world's, world's prescription painkillers. Nearly 70% of Americans are on one or more prescri prescription drugs and 20% take five or more pills per day. Um, interesting, interesting. Stimulants, central nervous system depressants, opioids, are the, th are the most commonly abused prescription medications. Um, are we numbing pain for a particular reason? Um, obviously, we've seen probably, at least I have, uh, ex-military vets 
veterans uh, get hooked on prescription drugs and painkillers. Um, but like I said, it affects everyone, all sorts of different peoples and cultures and society. And for whatever reason, America is number one with all these things. Uh, really quick, effects on the body, abuse of prescription drugs or using them in a manner other than exactly as prescribed can lead to addiction. The risks associated with prescription drug abuse vary depending on the drug. Some of the risks include respiratory depression and secession, um, decreased or ir irregular heart rate, high body temperature, seizures, cardiovascular fa uh, failure, accidental overdose, deaths um, have quad quadrupled over the past decade. Okay. All right. We're now on to marijuana. I looked up the current data uh, because some of the data is from a couple of years ago in the textbook, uh, but it's now legal in 38 states, marijuana, um, and 24 states uh, for uh, recreational use so not all states have just you can go and go to the pot shop um, um, and buy marijuana it's uh, um, yeah it can be uh, um, Marijuana vaping, an estimated 48.2 million Americans age 12 or older currently use marijuana. And I think it, it's probably increased, okay? Um, in fact, I looked it up and it was 17% of adults in the United States over 20 years old reported that they had used marijuana in 2023. So that is a huge amount of the population using marijuana. Common ways of marijuana use include rolling it into a joint or packing it into a pipe, hash pipe. Uh, using gravity bongs, vaping, oral ingestion. Uh, they've got candies and, and food and infused marijuana this and that um, oils placed on the skin uh, marijuana cigarettes may be laced with other drugs such as crack cocaine okay um, marijuana use among college age students okay uh, it's increasing especially with the legalization of marijuana, especially in our state. Um, Roseburg now has a lot of different um, marijuana stores. Um, um, so it's very easily accessible. Uh, the younger people in the class could probably tell me exactly what's happening at the middle schools and high schools and, and the increased use of marijuana. Uh, in the book, it calls it a starter drug or a gateway drug. I think we'd, we would have varying opinions again about this topic um, in the class. Okay. Um, and you know, it's, it's critical thinking. The legalization of marijuana is being heatedly, heatedly debated in the U S. So there's still a lot of States that it's not legal. What's your thoughts on the legalization of marijuana? Um, should the government just butt out and let people do whatever the heck they want? Um, or do you think uh, it should rest upon the government or the courts, uh, the Supreme Justices, to decide uh, what the law of the land is? Or should it be up to the individual states? And it, it, it kind of is right now. It's up to the individual states if they legalize it for 
uh, medicinal purpose purposes or recreational use. Um, but uh, yeah, we could spend all day talking about uh, different things that has ha that has happened in California and Oregon and Washington since uh, the legalization of marijuana. Um, one thing that they said was going to go away was the black market uh, selling of marijuana, and um, uh, they're still growing it in Northern California uh, because they're taxed so heavily. Um, and for other reasons, uh, that uh, the black market of selling pot is, is still still going on. Okay, so if we were in the classroom, we would have got into six different groups and um, uh, report back to the class, uh, have a discussion. Why do people use these drugs? Okay, what's what's something that uh, draws people in to these drugs and uh, why is it that it is addictive what are the harmful effects on the body and a person's health okay so it discusses all these things in the book okay we talked about prescription drugs for mo for non-medical use on page 500 marijuana cocaine meth ecstasy and heroin okay so let's turn over okay page 506 okay gateway drugs okay talking about heroin heroin use is part of a larger substance abuse problem nearly all people who used heroin also used at least one other drug most used at least three other drugs okay people who are addicted to alcohol are twice as likely to be addicted to heroin marijuana three times more likely cocaine 15 times more likely and painkillers opioids uh, prescription drugs for non-medical use 40 times okay and we're going to discuss discuss that as a class you know obviously heroin uh, but um, you know if we're more susceptible to addiction with different things you know we're we're more likely to be addicted to other things uh alcohol okay page 507 drinking alcohol has been socially acceptable uh, a socially acceptable behavior for centuries as an unaccompaniment at parties i'm sorry as an un not un accompaniment at parties ceremonies dinners sports contests the establishment of kingdoms or governments and the signing of treaties between nations let's toast to that alcohol has also been used for medical reasons as a mild sedative or as a painkiller for surgery for a short period of 14 years between 1920 and 1933 okay um prohibition uh that's what it's going to talk about okay um so let's read this real quick um although alcohol is often touted in the press as a vice that's good for you the modest benefits of alcohol can be equated to those obtained by taking a small daily dose of aspirin or the equivalent of a baby aspirin or or eating a few nuts each day aspirin or a few nuts do not lead to impaired judgment or actions that you may later regret or have to live with the rest of your life yeah impairing your judgment is a big one right Okay, <clears throat> uh, so the effects of alcohol, okay, uh, impaired peripheral vision, decreased vision and hearing, 
slower reaction time, reduced concentration and motor performance, uh, impaired judgment of distance, speed or of moving objects. Furthermore, alcohol alleviates fear, increasing risk taking, stimulates urination and induces sleep. Uh, we talked about that in class, you know, a little bit of alcohol, I think it gives you more energy. So probably need to pound a few to induce sleep. A single large dose of alcohol also may decrease sexual function. More serious consequences of alcohol abuse are increased risks of accidents and violent behavior. Excessive drinking has been linked to more than half of all deaths from car accidents. More than half car accidents. The risk for rape, domestic violence, child abuse, suicide, and murder also increases with alcohol abuse. Um, there's some other stuff there too. Like I said, that can get really serious, the effects of alcohol. Um, Jason Molina, one of my favorite mu musicians, uh, died from alcohol abuse. Um, just being addicted. He was an alcoholic for years and years and years, and that happens all the time. Alcohol is the most abused substance in the U.S. and the cause of one of the most significant health-related drug problems in the country today. Nearly 88,000 yearly deaths in the U.S. are due to excessive drinking. Okay, uh, you know, on college campuses, uh, you know, people fall off balconies, you know, you see in the news. Uh, obviously, you know, I had a friend that uh, unfortunately died in her own vomit. Um, you know, it's a social thing. I think that's why people drink alcohol. Some people love the taste. Um, wine, uh, obviously, and beer have been popular for centuries and centuries. It's embedded in our society. Uh, um, so, uh, you know, I put down Wendy Williams, uh, famous talk show host, uh, I just saw her on the news the other night, uh, because of alcohol abuse, uh, that she is in a really bad state right now and she's lost her memory and, and things like that. Um, but on college campuses, alcohol is the number one used drug uh drug drug problem amongst college students according to national surveys about 52 and a half percent of full-time students report using alcohol within the past month uh, my grad school ohio university was actually voted number two uh, uh, you know party school in america and uh, they used to have some pretty crazy parties there in the streets and, um, you know, again, varying opinions, you know, most people would say in moderation, it's okay. Uh, but it, when it's binge drinking, um, it becomes a po problem and, and you can become addicted to alcohol. In terms of academic work, a national survey says that 94,000 college students, um, uh, from almost 200 colleges conducted over three years showed that the grade point average was related to average number of drinks per week. Okay, we'll look at that here in a second. But students with a D minus or, or D or F level GPA reported weekly consumption of almost 10 drinks. Students with A level GPAs consumed about four drinks per week. Okay, so uh, interesting stats there. Okay, yeah, there's the figure 13.4, long-term risks associated with alcohol abuse. Okay, um, dam brain damages, uh, damages and eventually destroys brain cells, increases risk for strokes, impairs memory, dull senses, impairs physical coordination, depression, psychosis, and halluc hallucinations. Orally may cause cancer, 
uh, immune system, liver, obviously liver damage is, is huge, uh, stomach and intestines, heart, reproductive system, okay, lots of long-term risks associated with uh, alcohol abuse. Uh, we just read about this, the GPA there, uh, and you can see that uh, figure there, figure 13.5, average number of drinks consumed by students per week by GPA. Okay, so, you know, it's four drinks. Uh, you know, this is definitely becoming a binge drinking thing, right? Uh... Okay, 510, uh, we kind of read about this already, but obviously some serious consequences here. Um, unintentional injuries. <clears throat> so this is the top of page 510. Unintentional injuries, 700,000 are assaulted by another student who'd been drinking, 600,000 unintentionally injured. More than 550 develop alcohol-related health problems. Victims of sexual assault and date rape. 400,000 have unprotected sex. More than 100,000 were too intoxicated to know whether they'd consented to having sex. I think I told you a story about my friend. In, in, uh, he was playing cricket in England, but he went to Latvia. Uh, if I didn't tell you that story, don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> forget about it. More than 100,000 were too intoxicated to know whether they'd consented to having sex. Almost 3.4 million drive under the influence of alcohol. Okay, we just saw over half the deaths uh, in car accidents are a result of, of uh, alcohol was involved in those. Okay, so um, it also has figure 13.6 there, um, comparing college students with people that uh, are non-college college students. And it's interesting because the non-college students drink less alcohol. Uh, doesn't have the party atmosphere. Okay, uh, are these things prevalent at UCC or in our community, okay? Um, so all those risks of college drinking, um, I would say the risks are there. Uh, it may not be as prevalent as at a bigger four-year school that has that party atmosphere and everyone lives in the dorms or close uh, in college uh, housing close by. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we've got some commercials here. Uh, again, it's not going to work, uh, but I'm going to put um, the videos uh, on the link in the modules under the weekly modules. Uh, so look for the video link. And uh, this is a Bud Light Super Bowl commercial. Okay. This is one that we've seen recently. Uh, a Corona beer commercial, okay. Um, in the first commercial, they're having fun, um, you know, they're socializing, um, and they're really selling happiness and fun, okay. Uh, this commercial, um, with Snoop Dogg, uh, is trying to sell like a relaxed atmosphere. You got to have a drink to relax uh, and they're on the beach. So ask what is the message they want you to think and feel when they when you see these commercials. Do these do these commercials have an effect on you and the way you perceive alcohol um, or does it affect our society? Here's an old 1968 commercial about cigarettes. Okay. Uh, so watch those and, and ask yourself, what are they trying to sell you? Okay. 
Uh, obviously, it's cigarettes and alcohol, but what is the message? Um, does that have a negative effect on society as a whole? Or are we just ingrained? Has the message already been ingrained in us? And then, you know, what are the negative consequences of uh, these things in society or on your personal life? Okay, tobacco use. Uh, we could have talked about tobacco use a lot last chapter uh, with cancer prevention. Uh, we're going to read a little bit here. Okay, so hang tight. People throughout the world have used tobacco for hundreds of years. Before the 18th century, they smoked tobacco primarily in the form of pipes or cigars. Cigarette smoking, per se, did not become popular until the mid-1800s, and its, its use started to increase dramatically in the 20th century. When tobacco leaves are burnt, hot air and gases containing tar and nicotine are released in the smoke. More than 7,000 chemicals, hundreds of them toxic, have been found in tobacco smoke. About 70 are proven carcinogen, carcinogens. The harmful effects of cigarette smoking and tobacco use in general were not exactly known until the early 1960s when research began to show a link between tobacco use and disease. In 1964, the U.S. Surgeon General issued the first major report presenting scientific evidence that cigarettes were a major health hazard in American society. More than 40% of the U.S. adult population smoked cigarettes at the time. Since the report in 1964, more than 15 million premature deaths in the U.S. alone are attributed to smoking. Every day, more than 1,500 Americans under age 18 smoke their first cigarette, and many will become daily smokers. Young people who smoke are also more likely to abuse other illicit drugs. Smokers between 12 and 13 are nine times more likely to use drugs than non-smokers in the same age group okay now when they bring out the latest edition then the next edition of this textbook they're probably going to be talking about vaping a lot more um, what impact is vaping uh, had in society on the tobacco industry um, you know it's it's worth discussing and thinking about um, and we talk about marketing, you know, vaping marketing. Uh, we talked about that earlier. You know, it's it's bright. It uh, looks like um, candy wrapper or, or packaging. Uh, smoking is the largest preventable cause of illness and premature death in the uni United States. Um, so it's preventable. Um, and... And yet it's the largest, okay? Uh, the effects of smoking, I think we, we pretty much know these. Um, it, it has effects on almost everything. Um, uh, the health effects, stroke, cancer of the lar larynx, lung cancer, health, uh, heart attacks, ulcers, pancreas, pancreatic cancer, oral cancer, esophagus, chronic lung diseases, circulatory disease, bladder and kidneys, unborn babies, uh, if someone's pregnant and smoking, cervical cancer. Um, so huge issues and it's preventable. Okay. It also talks about secondhand smoke. We're not going to get into that in this lecture. Uh, but worth worth reading about worth reading about okay uh, you can see the lungs here um, in Australia they have commercials um, and they are like really graphic um, in America they're a little bit more tame um, but in Australia, it's it's full on. They've got like the aorta, the main artery of the heart, and they're squeezing out pus. 
um, and saying like this was a 25 year old pack a day smoker and um, it really hits you in the face uh, we just talked about this uh, the long-term uh, and possibly short-term effects of smoking um, all those things it affects everything pretty much um, just your ability to breathe um, and the cancers it causes and, and different issues. Healthcare costs, you know, I've studied a lot about healthcare in my PhD program, but um, heavy smokers use, uh, this is page 515, heavy smokers use the healthcare system, especially hospitals, twice as much as non-smokers. The American Cancer Society reports that for every time smokers purchase a cigarette, a pack of cigarettes in the U.S. at an average price of $6.36, they create $35 of future health-related costs for themselves. The yearly cost to a given company has been esti estimated to be up to $6,000 per smoking employee. The cost includes employee health care, absenteeism, additional health insurance, morbid, uh, mor morbid, morbid, I can't say, I need a drink of water, uh, or disability or early mortality, on the job, time lost, property damage or maintenance, um, workers comp, uh, for every US smoker, if every smoker in the U.S. were to give up cigarettes in one year alone, sick time would drop by approximately 90 million days. Heart conditions would decrease by uh, 280,000. Um, obviously, fewer uh, deaths in the United States uh, by over a million or fewer, I'm sorry, um, yeah, fewer cases of, of disease, cancers, cardiovascular disease. Okay, quitting smoking, page 520. Okay, uh, within the first 20 minutes, I think we've heard this before, like once you quit smoking, uh, within the first 20 minutes, your heart rate drops. Okay, between two and three months, heart attack risk begins to drop, your lung function in, uh, begins to improve. After one year of quitting smoking, your added risk for cor coronary heart disease is uh, slashed in half. Uh, 10 years, your lung cancer rate uh, is cut in half. Your risk of cancers, okay, um, over there as well. 12 hours, carbon monoxide level in your blood drops to normal. Carbon monoxide. <laughs> That's how serious it is, carbon monoxide. Uh, you don't want to breathe in that stuff. One to, to nine months, your coughing and shortness of breath decreases. Five years, stroke risk uh, is reduced to that of a non-smoker five to 15 years after quitting. 15 years, cor coronary heart dis uh, disease is back to that of a non-smoker. So there's benefits to quitting. It's never too late. How to break a habit. All right, we're going back here. How to break a habit. Okay, seven steps to breaking a ha habit. Step one, decide firmly that you want to quit and list your reasons. Step two, begin a personal diet and exercise program. Find something to fill that void, right? Okay, exercise makes your body feel tired and sore, and that's actually a good thing. Step three, decide on which approach you'll use to stop smoking. Step four, keep a daily log of your smoking habit for a few days. 
Um, step five, set the target date for quitting. Step st six, stock up on low calorie foods, carrots, broccoli. They say, um, you know, keep something in your hands to keep them busy. Uh, you know, I don't know, carrot stick, something. Sugarless dr gum, it says. Uh, step seven, keep, don't keep cigarettes handy. Okay.